Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Welcome to the course Electromagnetic Theory I am Bilal Behram and I will be teaching you this course Before starting this course let me introduce you to the electromagnetic theory that what is electromagnetic theory and why do we study electromagnetic theory in electrical engineering what will be the course topics and what are the recommended books so the recommended books are the field and wave electromagnetics by david k chin and engineering electromagnetics by william h head we will cover the first two chapters from the field and wave electromagnetics by david k chin and the rest of the chapters from the engineering electromagnetics in this course we will talk about the electromagnetic model we will discuss the vector calculus orthogonal coordinate systems and the vector analysis in simple words we will discuss about the vector analysis after that we will talk about electrostatics and electrodynamics we will talk about the charges at rest and the charges and in motion when the charges are at rest what will happen what will be the field due to those charges due, due to those static charges and when the charges are in motion they actually constitute the current so we will talk about the current related to the moving charges after that we will talk about the magnetostatics we will talk about the study magnetic fields in simple words we will derive the four basic maxwell's equations so what is actually electromagnetics so in electromagnetics is the study of the effects of charges at rest are in motion when charges are at rest are in motion they have certain effects so the study of those effects is actually the electromagnetics from elementary physics we know that there are two kinds of charges actually a charge is the fundamental property of matter just like mass but unlike mass charge comes in two flavors the charge may be positive or it may be negative both positive and negative charges are sources of an electric field similarly moving charges produce a current which gives rise to a magnetic field we can also define electromagnetics as the study of interaction of fields generated by charge distributions and currents or we can say that the study of interaction of fields generated by time varying charge distributions and currents but this definition doesn't mean to you at this time because the questions which can be raised are that what is actually a field if i am talking about the field so it is actually a field how are these fields generated by charges and currents and how do these fields interact so if i have to define the electromagnetics that it is the study of interaction of fields generated by charge distributions and currents so i have to define the field i have to say that how are these fields generated by charges and currents and how do these fields interact with each other when we have an electric field and magnetic field so how do these fields interact with each other so what is actually a field a field is a special distribution of a quantity which may or may not be a function of time or if we talk about an electric field so the region around a charged object in which 
its effect can be felt. So generally we can define a field as a, spe a spatial distribution of a quantity which may or may not be a function of time. So a time varying electric field is accompanied by a magnetic field and vice versa. In other words, time varying electric and magnetic fields are coupled resulting in an electromagnetic field. So in this course we will talk about the electromagnetic fields. The concept of fields and waves is essential in the explanation of action at a distance. We have action at a distance law. For instance, we learn from elementary mechanics that masses attract each other. This is why objects fall towards the earth's surface. But since there are no elastic strings connected, connecting a free falling object and the earth. How do we explain this phenomena? So we explain this action at a distance phenomena by postulating the existence of a gravitational field. If there was no gravitational field, the objects won't fall towards the earth's surface. So due to this gravitational field, this action at a distance law, the objects fall toward the earth's surface. It means there are no contact forces. But due to this action at a distance phenomena, I mean due to this gravitational field, the objects fall towards the earth's surface. Now, why do we study electromagnetics in electrical engineering? Where does this electromagnetics fit in electrical engineering curriculum? We know that we study the electromagnetic theory in electrical engineering, electronics engineering, telecom engineering, computer engineering. So why do we study this uh, electromagnetic theory in engineering? Are circuits theory, uh, circuits not enough to explain what is there in electrical engineering? For example, if we have to solve some problem, we use circuit concepts. But remember that circuit concepts represent a restricted version or a special case of electromagnetic concepts. We may have some cases where circuit theory is not enough to explain. And then we take the help of electromagnetic theory to solve those problems. And remember that this electromagnetic theory is the foundation course for the advanced courses like fiber optics, microwave engineering, radars and antennas. So this course has got a lot of applications in advanced courses. So let me tell you about this course that why do we study this course in electrical engineering. Let's suppose we have a signal source and let's suppose we have two long pair of wires a time t is equal to zero i am closing this switch a time t is equal to zero i am closing this switch so when i close this switch what will actually happen so from the circuit theory according to the circuit theory or before discussing that problem we will focus on this problem that when I am closing this switch at time t is equal to 0, what will happen? So there might be different, different answers. Some people will say that nothing will happen. Some may say that there will be a flow of current for a short time and then nothing will happen. And some may also say that this problem is not well defined 
we haven't told about the length and shape of the wire shape of the wire we haven't told about the signal source the frequency of the signal source so according to the circuit theory at time t is equal to 0 when i close this switch there will be no current flow because we have an open circuit the circuit is not closed when the circuit is not closed so there will be no current flow and the source voltage will be equal to the terminal voltage this source voltage will appear across the terminals of the wires but from our elementary physics let's suppose i am saying that this signal source might be a battery so from our elementary physics we know that a battery is a source of ions and electrons and when we connect electrodes to the terminals of a battery there will be a charging process charges will flow and if those electrodes are made of metal so there will be a flow of charges and whenever there is a flow of charges current will flow so we might say that wire will be charged and current flows during the charging process so these wires will be charged and current flows during the charges process but what process actually charge the wire what will be the shape of the current waveform or what will be the exact voltage waveform does the frequency of the source matter so these are the questions which can't be answered by the circuit people these are the questions which can't be explained by the circuit people so these questions are actually explained by the electromagnetic theory so that is why i told you that circuit theory is not enough to explain what is there in electrical engineering and we will take the help of electromagnetic theory to solve these problems like according to the circuit theory the length and shape of the wire doesn't really matter the frequency of the source doesn't really matter like if i connect a resistor across this circuit so and when we close this switch so this according to the circuit theory this whole voltage will appear across this resistor this whole voltage will appear across this resistor but when i increase the frequency the voltage across the resistor will drop to zero so this concept is actually not explained by the circuit theory similarly by changing the shape of the wire by changing the shape of the wire the voltage across the resistor will change and that effect can be seen by connecting an oscilloscope across the output if we connect the oscilloscope across the output we can measure that voltage we can analyze that voltage similarly by changing the length of the wire by changing the length of the wire there will be a delay in this voltage so this delay is actually not taken into account by the circuit people this delay is taken into account by the electromagnetic people so circuit theory is not enough to explain what is there in electrical engineering and we need the help of the electromagnetic theory to solve these type of problems in simple words we can say that circuit concepts are the circuit concepts represent a restricted version are special case of electromagnetic concepts actually circuit theory 
takes the lumped circuits. In circuit theory, we take the lump cases. And what is actually the lump model? The lump model is that model in which we ignore the time delay. Like I told you, by changing the length of the wire, by changing the length of the wire, there will be a delay in the output voltage. By increasing the length of the wire, there will be a delay in the output. And that delay is not taken by the circuit theory. So, actually, the circuit theory considers are actually the circuit theory represents the lumped model. And a lumped model is that model in which, in which we neglect the time delay. Apart from that, we have a figure and actually this figure depicts a monopole antenna of the type we see on a pocket arch. A monopole antenna of the type we see on a walkie talkie. Now during transmission or during communication on transmit the source at the base the source at the base feeds the antenna with a message carrying current at an appropriate carrier frequency. Now from the circuit point of view circuit theory point of view the source feeds into an open circuit. This is actually the source and the source feeds into an open circuit because the upper tip because the upper tip of the antenna is not connected to anything physically. Hence no current flows and nothing would happen. This viewpoint of course cannot explain why communication can be established between walkie talkies at a distance. So electromagnetic concepts must be used. So remember that when the length of the antenna, when the length of the antenna as an appreciable part of the carrier wavelength, a non-uniform current will flow along the open-ended antenna. A non-uniform current will flow along the open-ended antenna. This current radiates a time-varying electromagnetic field in space, which propagates as an electromagnetic wave and induces current in other antennas at a distance. I am repeating it again. When the length of the antenna is an appreciable part, when the length of the antenna is an appreciable part of the carrier wavelength. A non-uniform current will flow along the open-ended antenna. This current radiates a time-varying electromagnetic field in space, which propagates as an electromagnetic wave and induces currents in other antennas at a distance. So this phenomenon is actually not explained by the circuit point of view or circuit theory. And hence we need electromagnetic theory to solve this phenomenon. So that is why we study electromagnetics in electrical engineering. Or we can say that this course actually provides the foundation for the advanced courses like I already told you. We will discuss about this course further. In our next class. Thank you. If you people have any question, write them down and you can ask anytime.